The NBA has only one saving grace for its lackluster All-Star weekend, plus NHL scores, and let's be honest, I'll talk about anything for just about 10 minutes, but that's really it. 10 Minute Sports Report, next. Hello and welcome everyone. It is your 10 minute sports report. I am your host Captain Boyne. Thank you for being with us on this glorious Monday. Comment down below. How was the glorious Monday for you all? Uh, Thank you for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. Share on uh, Instagram. I that that was out of order. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram at fourth and one podcast. All words spelled out fourth and one podcast. Um, And welcome. So as I said in the open, NBA All-Star Weekend had one saving grace. And I'm going to get into that. I'm going to chat about that for a little bit. And then we'll uh, do some NHL scores uh, to wrap it up. But I want to start with this. First and foremost, the three-point contest is the signature contest of all contest that major sports have. So I know like the NFL this year, like they introduced a whole bunch of, they used a field goal co- kicking competition and a snapping co- competition and, you know, a whole bunch of other contest competition, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, hockey does, you know, slap shot and best trick and, and, and stuff like that. So every kind of sport has it. Every sport kind of has it. But the three-point contest is the premier creme de la creme, if you will, of all of them. And that was on evident because the best players in the game took place in it. Um, no one scored less than 22 points. And about seven, five to seven years ago, 22 points could have won you the contest, right? 18 was a great score. 22 was a low score. Um, 20, three people tied at 26. Uh, one person had 25. It was amazing. Um, Damian Lillard repeated as three-point champion. He finished with 26 in that final round to win. And it was a heck of a showing. Because again, it was the best three-point makers some superstars, some not superstar, you know, role players, whatever it may be in that contest. And then Steph Curry went out, and Steph Curry used to have the record for most points in a round in a three-point contest with 29. And then the WNBA All-Star came around later that year, and Sabrina Ionesco broke that, had it finished with 31. Okay, so she has top of any three-point contest um, uh, professional three-point contest, Sabrina Inesco has the most, okay? 31. So Steph challenged her during NBA All-Star Weekend to it. And this took place after the regular, and it wasn't whoever. And Sabrina came out, and she had a round of 26. So she scored just as many as Dame, Dame Lillard did when he, he won the whole thing, right? Steph comes out, and, they, and he's the best shooter in the planet. So Dame had 26 in the first round and then they went to an overtime thing. So that doesn't count. And then 26 in the last round, Sabrina Inesco, 26 in one round. Seth Curry came out and made 29 points look easy. So he tied his previous career high and the previous record before Sabrina broke it and then beat Sabrina in a friendly competition. So first and foremost, that was, that was excellent. Sabrina, heck of a player. I, I, I'm going to be honest. Her ball looks amazing coming off. The WNBA needs to change their ball because I don't like how it's white and orange. Just make it all orange, okay? You don't need to be different at everything. Um, She's amazing. I I I didn't know I didn't know she could shoot like that. Like that's that's amazing. So learn something new every day. So she goes out, and then everyone the internet starts, of course, with guy versus girl. Oh my gosh, and that whole argument. And they're just like some guys are like immediately afterwards. The commentator, the one commentator, goes, she should have shot from the women's three-point line or the WNBA three-point line. And I'm thinking to myself, well, yeah, 
She should have shot from it. And now everyone's getting on that guy. How dare you give her, how, how dare you rationale she only lost because she didn't shoot from closer and, and women are, how dare you, how dare you, women are just as good as men and this proves that she had 26 and, and, and you're just handicapping her and he's 100% right. In order to make this fair, for everybody involved, Sabrina should shoot from where she's used to shooting from. A hundred percent. Still great score. Sabrina says she shoots from the men's three-point line anyway. I have no doubt of this. And and she did a great job. But what I'm saying is, it, it'd be like, okay, here, here, here's my analogy. It'd be like, I play a lot of Madden, as most of you know. I stream it, Captain Boring, okay? Go follow me on Twitch, Captain Boring. I stream a lot of Madden. I play it on Xbox. This is what my Xbox controller looks like, okay? You see an A, you see a B, you see an X, you see a Y. You see the two joysticks kind of down, and then you see this D-pad, okay? You see what this looks like. It'd be like someone saying, hey, Makai, you're really good at Madden. I want you to enter in this tournament. Well, then when I show up with my controller or whatever, and they'll say, no, we'll provide you controllers. So I show up. They hand me a PlayStation controller. Go look up a PlayStation controller. While it's virtually the same, almost identical, these two joysticks here on a PlayStation controller are here and here and next to each other. And the buttons, why there are four buttons here, and two buttons up top and two buttons here, they're all labeled something different on a PlayStation controller. So it'd be like if I went out and I lost to the greatest Madden player in the world by, by three on a PlayStation, right? Kick game-winning field goal. I, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that was really good. Let's run that back Xbox style and see how, and then see how it is. Because it's just different enough. Yeah, like play, even playing field. Uh, Sabrina did a great job. It's excellent. Steph, greatest shooter in the world, greatest shooter of all time. It was easy money. Sabrina, however, I, I will give this caveat. Right Sabrina could have shot from the women's three-point line. Steph Curry was going to smoke her that night. If Sabrina scored 29, Steph was going to score 30. If Sabrina scored 31, Steph was going to score 32. There was no way Steph was going to lose. He's the best shooter on the planet time and time again, and he proved that again. Three-point contest. Mwah! Rest of the NBA All-Star game absolutely stunk, and let's get into that. So here's the deal. The dunk contest, no big names. Max McClung, G League. So it'd be baseball. It, it's basically, you know how there's the MLB and then AAA? It's NBA's version of AAA, the G League. Max McClung, who used to play for the G League affiliate of the 76ers and needs a shot, as they were saying, came up from the G League. The NBA just or allowed this allowed this originally, G League players, to um, play in three-point or in the dunk contest. And one, and I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying this to, to be funny, but I, I am kind of saying this to be funny, but a white man, no, well, what does security do about it? Nothing. Typical. A white man. My, my dude, is a six foot two white guy. And he's winning a slam dunk contest. There are no superstars in the slam dunk contest. None. White, black, purple. From outer space. From mole people in the ground. There are no superstars in the slam dunk. The closest we got to a superstar was Jalen Brown. And he went out in the first round. First, and then the judges just... I mean, Max McClung should have won this thing in his first two dunks. He should have had two 50s back to back. And the judges were just not good. Get rid of the whole thing if your superstars aren't going to compete in it. Get rid of it and go to a one-on-one -on -one competition. Because I'll tell you what, Kevin Durant will go up against anyone to prove he's the best one-on-one -on -one player in the world. Oh, I'll bet LeBron James will do a one-on-one -on -one competition to prove he's the best one-on-one -on -one player in the world. Slam dunk? No, fine. Then we're going to take away slam dunk and we're going to institute something where our stars will play. Three-point? Contests have it. Heck, three point contest is grabbing superstars from other leagues and bringing them in to challenge our superstars. And it's better television than the dunk contest. It is 
asinine. The dunk contest is garbage. Get rid of it. And the dunk contest is only slightly better than the flaming pile of garbage that is the actual all-star game. They wanted effort. 211 to 86 was the final score. Eastern Conference won. I don't even know who won until right now. Eastern Conference won. The commissioner, Adam Silver's annoyance at what took place was clearly on display, says the ESPN articles. And to the Eastern Conference All-Star, you scored the most point, Silver said flatly. Well, dot, 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 ellipses, I think that's called in English terms. Smart people comment down below. Is that what that's called? Ellipses? Oh. Ellipses, maybe? Congratulations, end quote. Um, well, Adam Silver, you did this to yourself. As soon as it used to be that the, it used to be East West All-Star. Winner of the game would have home court advantage. Nope, that's MLB. The winner of the All-Star game basically had bragging rights. And in the NBA, that used to mean something. I'm thinking of MLB where it used to be AL versus NL. Winner of that game had home court advantage or home field advantage throughout uh, the World Series. I'm sorry. These players just don't care. There's no defense. It's all offense. I mean, at one point, Luka Doncic picked the ball up from his own half and just shot a full court shot just because he could. Um, so, uh, the NFL ran into the same situation about three years ago and rebranded. As you remember, a couple weeks ago, I talked about it. They did a great job. Pro Bowl, they made it a flag game. They said, fine, um, we're not really going to let you guys play defense or hit each other. Let's do flag. Let's do come sort of these competitions and, and let's just have a grand old time. And that's what they did. And it was a big big success even the flag football game competitive flag football game was so competitive down the end because what did they also do they went out and they got Eli and Peyton to coach the teams two guys who are dedicated to this sport and have been for decades and Eli and Peyton were the guys most into it NBA all-star game needs to figure something out because it's trash despite that um, let's, however, get into this because I've already been ranting and raving and droning on for 12 and a half minutes. All righty, dighty. So NHL on Friday, get to scores. Uh, let's jump ahead actually to Saturday. Vegas hosted Carolina and it did not go their way. Carolina walked into their building and stole their lunch money. Three to one was the final there. Anaheim visited Toronto and got smacked around and then had to tell the Maple Leafs that they liked it. Nine to two was the final there. Wow, I do I feel bad for the Ducks. Meanwhile, Edmonton stays hot with a 4-3 overtime win uh, against Dallas. On Saturday during the outdoor series, New York faced New York in MetLife Stadium, and it was New York coming away with the victory. That is the Rangers over the Islanders. 6-5 in overtime. The Rangers erased a three-goal deficit, first ever three-goal deficit in the stadium series. Arizona visited Colorado later Sunday night and came away with a loss. Colorado winners there four to three. Currently, matchup Detroit is taking on Seattle. Vegas is taking on San Jose. If we look in and around the NHL standings, we will see that the Colorado Avalanche sit four games behind the Dallas Stars, five, four, and one in their last 10 matchups. They sit in second in the Western Conference Central. Stars, Avalanche, Jets in that order. In the Pacific, the Canucks lead and are the best team in the NHL points wise, 80 points. They lead by 12 points over the Vegas. Golden Knights. Meanwhile, the Edmonton Oilers, who stay hot, 7-3-0 in their last 10 games, 
are creeping up on the Vegas Golden Knights now with 65 points. And right behind them are the Los Angeles Kings with 64. If we look into the wild card and the playoff standings, the Bruins, the Panthers, the Maple Leafs lead the Atlantic. The Metropolitan is the Rangers, the Hurricane and the Flyers. The wild card are the Lightning and the Red Wings. In the Western Conference, the Central Stars, Avalanche Jets, Pacific Canucks, Knights, Oilers, wild card Kings, Blues. Kings have 64 points. Blues have 60 points. Then it is the Predators, 58, Wild, 58, Kraken, 56, Calgary Flames, 55. So very tight knit there in the West. And that'll do it for this rendition of the 10 Minute Sports Report. Thank you, everyone, for listening this far along, and we will see you next time. Until then, remember God loves you. I pray God bless you. And remember to wash those filthy hands because y'all are animals. See you later.